guys how's it going it's al week 14 is finally here in nfl dfs and i have a DraftKings lineup that we're going to build for you from a first look perspective i've taken a look at everything that's on this 10 game slate just before going live with this and i have a double stack with a bring back a highly correlated lineup that we're going to build for tournaments to try and use this as a lineup building exercise to help you once again this week do what you're supposed to do to try and take down a large field tournament so Thank you guys for being here. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with a friend, click that little share button down below, send the link to somebody. Uh, create a, an email like poop at poop.com and email the link to that would be just fine. Leave me a reply down below, letting me know, I don't know, let me know something about raccoons. Sounds like a good, like, you know, you could use a raccoon emoji. You could tell me how they're trash pandas. You could, anything you want. Tell me something about a raccoon and let's go. He's a legend. Every single Monday, I come out with a recap for what happened the previous week. The week 13 recap will be, once again, on the Al Smizzle Fantasy Football channel. You can go to smizzle.tv slash FF, or you can just find it on my main page here on the main site. Here's the week 11, here's the week 12. By the time this video is posted, week 13 is going to be right here. So you can go over to Al Smizzle Fantasy Football and see that and all the other videos that I put out every single week. Tons of videos all off season as well to help you uh, with best ball and, and everything else that happens in the NFL offseason for fantasy football. So I appreciate you guys supporting not just here on the main channel, but also the Al Smizzle Fantasy Football channel. Be sure that you join the Smiz Gang Listener League. $10 to enter, three max, $35,000 in the prize pool. Absolutely no rake. This game does not exist in the lobby. You got to go to smizzle.tv slash link. So there'll be a link right down below in the description. That is the only way to get in. You need to use the link. You will not find it in the lobby. The best tournament on DraftKings. We have to fill it. If we don't fill it, they will make it smaller the next week. So 3,500 entries. Let's get it done. Go to smizzle.tv slash links. Let's take a look at the games that are on this slate. This is a haves versus the have nots kind of slate. There's a lot of blowout potential. Buffalo against the Jets. Bills favored by nine. Bengals against Cleveland. Bengals by six. Divisional contest, you know, in, intrastate rivalry, however you want to put it. Dallas against Houston. Dallas favored by 16 freaking points in this big oof. Best game on the slate, Detroit against Minnesota, 53 and a half total. Uh, Lions favored. I, I saw that right. Lions favored by one. It's essentially a pick em, but either way. Uh, Giants against Philly, Eagles by seven. We saw what they've done to Tennessee the last weekend. Pittsburgh and Baltimore, Steelers by two in a really low total game. Jaguars, Titans, really low total game. KC, Denver. Chiefs by nine in that one. Seahawks, Carolina. Seahawks by three and a half. 49ers, Buccaneers. It's got a total of 37 and a half. So a whole lot of ugliness following the carnage that happened in week 13. Let's take a look at the pricing for the quarterbacks. Josh Allen, if you wanted to try and double him against New York, 8,300 for him. A lot cheaper for Mike White at 5,500. If you wanted to get exposure to somebody uh, in that game, if they can keep sort of pace with them, over 20 fantasy points, averaging 25.1 in the two games that he's been there, 300-yard bonus in both games. The Bills, a much tougher defense than what he saw with either Minnesota or Chicago. So this could be a come-to-Jesus moment for Mike White. Last time that they played them, they did run the ball a ton uh, in that game where the Jets played the Bills earlier this season. The Bills, an extremely tough defense this game in Buffalo, not in New York. Uh, but Mike White stacks are a cheaper way to get access to like somebody like Steph Diggs on the other side, and you can get Garrett Wilson with him. So uh, I don't, I don't hate them. Jalen Hurts, 8,100. Do I have to double stack Jalen Hurts? Everybody always asks me. Well, if Jalen Hurts has a really big game, that might mean that somebody like AJ Brown might also have a really big game. And with uh, Dallas Goddard out, Devontae Smith has averaged like over 30% of the target market share, might also have a really big game. And that double stack can score you like, you know, 85, 90 points. Yeah, I'd probably suggest doing things like that. Although the New York Giants, a tough team against opposing wide receivers, two very good defenses in this spot. We'll see what kind of takes over. Also divisional matchups specifically like the second time. It's, it's a little bit tougher. Patrick Mahomes, Denver's a very tough deep. This is just, a, uh, from a first look, this is a really awkward slate. I don't hate the slate. It's not a bad slate. It's just an awkward slate. Mahomes coming off of uh, two single touchdown performances, though he did run one in in week 13 
far from this stretch where he had four straight games and five of six with 30 plus DraftKings points. We'll see if they can get right here against Denver, but Denver very tough defensively. Uh, they just don't allow very many touchdowns. I think they've allowed an average of one touchdown for the last two months per game. Uh, the Chiefs do have a team total of 26 in this one because maybe they're just too good of an offense, too big to fail sort of a situation there. Lamar Jackson, monitor his knee injury. We don't understand if they say it's not season ending, but if he misses this game, we might get Snoop again going up against Pittsburgh, who's only 5,500. So $1,900 difference. We know that Snoop can be a, a viable fantasy option, though there's very few people to stack him with. I if you're going to stack Snoop, I would go with like a single stack, probably through Mark Andrews, which is what we've been doing with those stacks anyway, with Lamar stacks anyway. But like I said, this is the best game right here. Minnesota Detroit, by far the highest total on the slate. They're at 53 and a half. The next highest total is Browns against the Bengals at 47. Then you got Texans against the Cowboys at 46. Uh, both of them are massive, you know, spreads. Where like, they may not keep pace, especially not Houston. They may not keep pace at all. Cousins, we haven't really seen access to a ceiling from him. As good as the weapons are around, uh, not one game over 24 DraftKings points this season. But on the other side, and for 500 less, Jared Goff at home. 22.3 on the road, 9.9. .9. They're at home in this one. So for those of you who like the home road splits, this one would be in your favor and may the odds ever be in your favor as well. Coming off a 340 yard game against Jacksonville, Minnesota's defense has not stopped just about anybody this year. And we kind of know where the ball's gonna go. Who is he gonna throw the ball to? Maybe he's gonna throw the ball to Amon Ross St. Brown 10 plus times every single game. Until Amon Ross St. Brown is priced at like 8,300 plus, he's still a value. So give me exposure to him. DJ Chark is 4,300 coming off of a six target game. It is entirely possible that they move uh, Jamison Williams into a higher snap count role, but he did not play very many snaps at all. I don't see them rushing him back uh, into any sort of snap and target prominence or route running prominence. We'll see as the week rolls along. But the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of good in terms of countables, snaps, routes run, targets for DJ Chark, specifically at his price point and in an offense against a, uh, a team that cannot stop basically anything. DJ Chark fits in really nice. Now we're left with the possibility, can we afford to get up to Justin Jefferson, who is a monster? Now look, the Jets are really good at stuffing opposing wide receivers, two great cornerbacks two of PFF's top five, I believe, off the top of my head, definitely top 10, just depends on the week and their grades from the, the week prior. Even in that matchup, 18.6 points, he is a candidate against Detroit to definitely ceiling. I'm gonna wanna have shares of Justin Jefferson, but for this lineup building concept, how can I ignore the TJ Hawkinson revenge game? At 5,100 coming off of a bad week, we get to pay up a little bit at tight end for Premium tight end usage. I know he's only seen six targets the last two weeks. This is a game with such a high total that we will probably see a lot more usage out of this Vikings passing game or the running game. If you want to go with Dalvin Cook as your bring back, that's fine too. But I feel like I can make it work with TJ Hawkinson because the bottom of the barrel tight ends really aren't producing all that much for us on a week in, week out basis. If you want to punt tight end and go with JJ or punt tight end and go with Dalvin Cook at running back, I'm fine with that too. This is the route that I've shown. I think chosen and i believe that this is a very solid double stack bring back let's take a look at some of the run let me plug in a defense just so we kind of i'm gonna plug in a super chat. let's plug in uh two of the running backs we have 6200 remaining with a double stack bring back from the highest totaled game on the day with really kind of cheaper prices all of whom have volume one of the biggest places we go to when I first look at lineups is the matchups, right? We want to attack Cleveland, but we don't know at this point, so I'm not going to use them, if Joe Mixon is going to be able to clear through concussion protocol yet, or if it's going to be Samaj P. Ryan. If there is nothing that has made the argument once again for the running backs don't matter, it's not that running backs don't matter, it's that running backs are replaceable. Samaj P. Ryan, when thrust into the job vacated by... Joe Mixon, when he left that game against Pittsburgh with a concussion, has done very, very well. Now, yeah, Samaj Piran has a lot of fails, like his success rate on runs is not exceptionally high, but like he's very good in the passing game. And from a fantasy point of view, from an, a real life point of view, they've won all three of those games since Joe Mixon's been out. I'm not saying that they're winning in spite of Joe Mixon not being there. 
Uh, I'm saying that like the running back position is just not that much of a difference maker. Though P Ryan at 6,300 is fine. Also, 6,900 for Joe Mixon, also fine. If Mixon is cleared, I expect him to play a full amount of snaps and I will want to have shares of Joe Mixon. I cannot go with him yet, especially since I do want to use Ken Walker, who is uh, a five box running back this week. Somebody that if he gets over this ankle, they can't confirm his status yet. We'll monitor this as the week on. I was not going to play two guys that are questionable on Monday when I do these lineups. I'm going to use one of that trio in this spot. So I'm going to go with Ken Walker since he has the least path of resistance here with a, a kind of an ankle injury that doesn't look super structural. We know that guys can play through non-structural uh, injury issues because of the great drugs that they have at the NFL level. Carolina giving up tons of yardage on the ground to opposing running backs. And Ken Walker, very efficient when given the opportunity and playing from ahead uh, to have big time runs. We know that he's not all that involved in the passing game, but can be in games that they're playing from behind. I expect that they play from ahead in this one. Big playability against Carolina. 100-yard bonus in play here, as well as massive touchdown upside with nine of them. Uh, and I believe all of them but like one has come. No, it, all of them came after the Rashad Penny injury. So nine touchdowns in uh, in that span of time. I'll plug him in in this spot. And then I want to have access to Dallas's offense. Tony Pollard, in my opinion, is the better running back. He's 6,700. Ezekiel Elliott is 6,100. And if we look at what their usage was in week 13, Ezekiel Elliott, even though he did not play the first quarter because of disciplinary reasons, 53.8% of the snaps on the game. 54.1% of all the running back touches. Tony Pollard relegated to RB2 status once again, just because Zeke is there and Jerry Jones has to write big checks. 43.1% of the snaps, 37.8% of the running back touches. I hate it. I absolutely do. I'm still going to plug in Ezekiel Elliott because no matter, both are fine. You could play either one, right? I, you want to go with Pollard? I, I'm not arguing against it. Like he's amazing. He's had a fantastic year, but I have to play. It's about opportunity. Just like I said with the Joe Mixon, Samaj J. Piron, whichever one of them is going to get the lion's share of the use in that sort of an offense, you have to go with that guy. And Ezekiel Elliott playing more snaps, getting more touches and getting over twice as many inside the five carries than is Tony Pollard. So as long as he's there, he has massive touchdown upside in this spot against Houston. I would argue that Tony Pollard has more big play upside, but you're going to have to get it on less snaps and less touches. It, it makes it a gross situation. If you want to play both of them, it's a dangerous spot. We saw both kind of pay off for, uh, for people on that showdown slate uh, where he had 24 and Ezekiel had like 18. But this is this is where we are, and I absolutely can't stand it. I don't like it at all. I need to find a little bit of value here. So let's go to the wide receiver position. Thank you guys for the subs, bro, man. Thank you for the 30 months. Zen Care Bear, thank you for the 28 months as well. Remember, if you are subbed to the channel on Twitch, or if you're a YouTube channel member, you can go to smizzle.tv slash join and then join our community Discord and you get access to all the VIP rooms in the Discord as long as you're subbed to either place. YouTube channel members and Twitch subs all have the same perms when it comes to our Discord. It's the one place where all the Smiz gang comes together to discuss whatever it is, whether it's NBA, NFL, Showdown, live games that we sweat in the live channels, anything else like that, go hang out in the Discord. It's the best value add that we have here on the channel as a part of the Smiz gang community. There's a couple of values that I think are screaming at the wide receiver position. Uh, if you wanted to pair for Jefferson, like obviously I'm fine with that. Steph Diggs, he's a monster. AJ Brown, grown ass man. Jamar Chase, clearly back. And the one catch that didn't count, this seven of eight, right? The one that didn't count was probably his best catch of the day where he leapt out of bounds and caught a ball over his head like he was the Jordan logo, one-handed. Uh, great return for him. CD Lamb, 7,500, but again, going to be a weird spot. He can get there, but he's going to have to get there on less usage. DK Metcalf, fine at 7,100. T Higgins, also fine at 7,000. Godwin, we're going to have to see what happens here, but a terrible matchup against San Francisco, really low total. But Jacksonville against Tennessee, Christian Kirk is seeing a ton of volume. 8, 9, 12, 9, and 7 in his last five games. Very easy convertible catches, uh, targets into catches. Love how much they're going to him. And Tennessee is not a team that allows you to run the ball very effectively or efficiently. They're kind of a team that forces you to pass and they're very soft. One of the best matchups for wide receivers. We saw AJ Brown and Devontae Smith 
just tear them to shreds from the best running team in the league who just said, you know what? They're just going to let us throw it, so we're going to just throw it. Not going to get pressured is uh, Trevor Lawrence, so he should have time to throw, and he's been very efficient uh, the last month, growing in talent every single week. So Christian Kirk at 6,600 looks like a really solid value, leaving us with 5,500, and I need a little bit of a correlation play here. So DJ Moore at 5,500 to correlate with that Ken Walker Jr. play. So I have a secondary stack in this uh, in this offense. DJ Moore has been awakened since Sam Darnold uh, syndrome from the movie, the, the Pixar movie, The Incredibles, if you remember as such. When he is at quarterback, he just looks for DJ Moore, especially when they get close to the goal line. So I'm hoping that DJ Moore gets another one of those 8, 9, 10 target games in a situation where they should be playing from a little bit behind and have to chase uh, DJ Moore once again in play here for us. So give me Jared Goff, Ken Walker, Elliott, Brown, Chark, Kirk, Hawkinson, and more. Plug in whatever cheap defense works for you and look out for another video right there. He's a legend.